William H. Rooker. Uh, well, I didn't finish. I attended West High School, Morristown. I went through the ninth grade, and that's it. Okay. And uh, what did you do after, as soon as you got out of the ninth grade, what did you do? Worked on a farm. Can you talk about a little bit about what kind of farm work did you do? Tobacco, hay, cattle, milk, and that's about it. Where, what farms did you work on? Walker, H.O. Walker and, and, and uh, Russellville. Mm -hmm. I volunteered for the Army. Okay. And how old were you whenever you volunteered? 20. Mm -hmm. I was 20 when I volunteered for the Army. Well, I just wanted to go. I was uh, working on the farm. I know I could do better than that, so I just went and joined the Army. Where is it? Uh it was, was it because of the pay, the, like the potential for pay and stuff like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I went to the Army. I just picked one. Was there a reason that the Army... No, there wasn't no reason. Just, it was ours, so I just took it. Well, I can't hardly remember all that, but uh, I left here on, I forget what day it was. Went to Fort Benning, Georgia. They done out two months, done uh, AIT, not AIT, but boot camp. I, then I left there and went to uh, Fort, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Then AIT, then I left there and went to Vietnam, August the 7th, 1967. Went to Vietnam. Stayed over 18 months. 18 months too long. It was a little different, but uh, wasn't that wasn't that much different. I just didn't have to go through the bull giant at Fort Leonard what that did in basic. Talk to me a little bit about your your training, if you remember any of that. Uh, what was boot camp like uh, in Georgia? Well, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I try not to remember that stuff. Uh, I remember going through the rifle range. I couldn't hit a bull, but uh, and the PT had to take. It was rough, and then it was hot in the sand in Georgia. Fort Leonard, Missouri, wasn't quite as bad as that. It was cold. In the morning, it was cold. At night, it was hot. Some cases it was, it was a lot worse than it was here. In some cases it wasn't. Uh, Georgia it wasn't too wasn't too bad. Uh, and Fort Leonard, Missouri it was, it wasn't too bad at all. I, of course, I got along with them all, all of them anyway. Yeah. Do you think it helped being a being a farm boy? Being in the military, you think that that fit well? Like knowing how to work hard and... Yeah, that, that helped out a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we found where we were going about two weeks before I left, uh, two or three weeks before I left uh, Fort Leonard, Missouri. I got to come home for seven days and stayed seven days and shipped out to Vietnam. Went to Fort, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. It was hot, it was in, in August. And it was hot there in the daytime and at night. After 12 o'clock, it got cold. Uh, then I went to, uh, flew out there and went to Cameron Bay, Vietnam. Stayed in Cameron Bay a few days, then left out and went to Anke. Stayed there about six months. And was working at night on a building our airport. And left there and went to play coup. And left play coup. Come home. I kind of got home to come home for a month. Then I went back over and left there and went to from play coup. Went to Bobby to it. 
in mud knee deep. Yeah, it rained for three months. Uh, Play Coup was a, was that a helicopter base? Or is that? Nah, that was a, a more engineer outfit. Well, I, I had a good job. When I first got, when I was at IMK, I worked at night uh, building an airport, our runway. Then they came the deep job. And I was second in, in line to get the deep job, but the guy before me got it and he drove one day and he didn't like it, so I started out driving the Jeep. So I drove a Jeep for several months. Then I, I got with the Jeep and was a, a squad leader. Straight before I made straight four off from the Jeep. Squad leader. And after I made squad leader, I made uh, buck sergeant. Then I, after I, after I'd come home, went back. I got taken a shower one day and got cut my foot, and didn't do nothing for three months. I chased the women. How'd you chase the women with a hurt foot? Well, I'd hop around on it. Well, that's the truth. <laughs> What was the, uh, what was the name of your, your unit? 20, 23rd Engineer Battalion. Uh, I can think of the name of the darn thing. I can't think of the name. What they call it? Ted and Fences. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember when it happened, but it, it was a rough one. Yeah, it wasn't me, yeah. You had to worry about getting overrun by Vietnamese. Like we had one company up north, uh, D Company, 23rd Engineer Battalion. They got overrun. They was coming over the hill. They'd shoot down one, there would be another line up and come across, and they came up. They had to, there's a plane, C 130 landed, and they run and jumped on the plane. And the only thing they, the only thing they left with was their clothes and their, and their, Body and they no material. They didn't. They didn't leave out nothing. They left everything. What was it like to be black over there in Vietnam? Well, it was rough. Of course, I didn't have no problem, but it was rough. A lot of guys caught it was rough on them. The white boys thought they were better than the black boys. And they always gave them a lot of trouble. Bullies. Of course, I didn't put up none of that bull. It was one incident one day that uh, it was black dude and white dude, and they was they big, big boys, big boys. And they were going to jump on a little bit, got a little bit of black boy because he was black. And uh, that didn't work out too good. He kicked ass. Did you ever ask yourself, uh, you know, like, why, why are we here? Like, why are we? Yeah. I never get no answer out of it. Did you uh, notice any difference between, was there any difference or between the soldiers that were drafted and the ones that volunteered? Could you tell a difference in the way that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. They, they'd remind you of it. They, they tell you, you know, you didn't have to be here, but you're here. You, uh, you volunteered to, you don't hear your bullshit. When you got back from Vietnam, did you have any trouble sleeping? Did you have a disruptive sleep cycle or anything like that? Yes, didn't didn't sleep. I went on, the time I was over there, I, I'd slept maybe 10 minutes a night. Didn't do no sleeping. And when I got home, didn't sleep none. It was, it was years, I guess, 20, 30 years before I got to work and sleep in a year. Do you still have sleep problems today or you? No, I still have them. I, I won't fight at night. 
I don't say I just don't sleep. I got to me I sleep about four or five hours a night. But I wake up all during the night wanting to fight and stuff. I don't know why. So you're from Russellville, but did you have any uh, impressions about the the anti anti war protesters? Like whenever you you'd see it on TV, did you have any impressions about that or like feelings about about what they was doing? I thought they were crazy, Neil. That's about all. Did you did you have any understand? Did you understand what they was? What the protesters were doing? No, and they didn't either. Whenever you come back, did you have did you did you have your uniform when you come back? Yeah. Yeah. How was that? I, mean, I didn't have trouble. And listen a lot of shit, but other than that, they think to hide. Well, what kind of trouble did you get in? They just hollered at you. Baby killer and stuff like that. Um, when you got back from that second time, uh, did you have a hard time transitioning back to day-to-day -day life here? No, just didn't sleep. Didn't sleep none. Drunk a lot of beer, but didn't sleep none. Is there anything that, the, that bothered you about the government, you know, the way the government treated uh, vets or during the war or, or after you come back home? Was there any, anything there that kind of bothered you? There's a lot of things, but I can't none, name all of them. There's a lot of it. They didn't. And it, it, it wouldn't treat you right. Of course, it goes on now. With today's vets? Yeah. Do you remember where you were when uh, you heard that Martin Luther King had been killed? I was in Vietnam. Talked to any of the other troops about that and what, what had happened? Or uh, no. Did they talk to you about it? No, they didn't talk to me about it. I was a country boy, they didn't think I had enough sense to be talking to him. Well, the main thing is that like a man. That's the biggest thing they have to do. Is that like a man and, and stand up like a man. Not not this bull crap that they like to do. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing I like about they get in the army and they get the uniform on and they they bad. They're tough. Ain't nothing tough about them. Bunch of old bullshit. When, uh, during the Tet Offensive, was, uh, was your base hit at all? No, we didn't get hit. But it was all, it was all around us. All that happened, uh, probably about a mile from the base, it had a truck come by and get hit. Missed a, Killed a bunch of people. Did you have to go anywhere else to fix their airfields or any of that? No, I, the only thing I did when that happened was uh, I dug a big trench and buried the Vietnamese in it. Just to get them up with a front end loader, dug, throw them off into the hole and covered it up. That's a stinky job. I'd say a hundred of them. Yeah, VCs.